Thank you and welcome again to the Inglewood Political Symposium. This is the automatic form for the 16th Ward. Jose A. Garcia is an independent candidate for the constituents. He has worked for Standard and Heating Company as a warehouse manager. He is running for alderman in the 16th Ward. Stephanie D. Coleman is a recent graduate with a master's in nonprofits. She is running for 16th Ward Alderman. <laughs> Cynthia Lomax, community activist for over 40 years and an employee of the City Colleges of Chicago. <laughs> Alderman Tony Folks. Raised in Inglewood since seven years of age, Tony was elected in 2007 to represent the community. Since her election, Tony has stood up for our neighborhood, leading the fight to raise the minimum wage and also to make employers provide sick days. Tony fought against school, school closings and was successful in making sure none happened in her ward. She is committed to fighting to keep our community safe and helping to provide kids with alternatives to gangs. Welcome to all of our candidates. We will begin the forum by giving each candidate two minutes to make opening statements. And we will begin with Mr. Garcia. These are opening statements. Hello, Tessin. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Before I begin, I just want to praise my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And may I begin, please? It's an honor to be here for the very first time in, in Limblum High School. I would like to ask this. I have, worked for, I have worked as an employee for the city of Chicago for the past 22 years. I have learned how the city gets things done in both emergency situations and day-to-day -day activities. Second, when there are broken water lines in the streets, I know, what, I know who to call and how many people are needed to repair the water lines to get jobs done. In, wa in water line emergencies, I have worked with the city tradesmen to make repairs for both neighborhoods and business residents. As a, as a former special service area commissioner 59, I have Im implemented, uh, implemented the following strict straight guidelines on how to share the TIF money with the local businesses in order to improve the neighborhoods without getting, the, without getting or giving kickbacks. Second, I am a member of International Community Relations Council, ICRC, is a multicultural group that serves the community. It includes African Americans, whites, Hispanics, Palestinians. I have worked in ICRC food pantry and back to the school programs for the community. ICRC is cooperating with many other community groups on the areas to broaden, expand, zero tolerance for racism in our community. Third, the volunteer, I also volunteer in Sanat food, pro, food programs, pantries, which serve people in the 15th Ward, 16th Ward, 17th Ward, and neighborhood wards. I am also an active member and support, supportive member of the Chicago chapter of American Clergy Leadership Conference. Thank you, Mr. Garcia. Next, Ms. Coleman. You have two minutes for opening statements. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Stephanie Coleman. I'm obviously a candidate for Alderman of the 16th Ward. I would like to thank Inglewood Votes and Limbloom for hosting and coming in unity to have this event. I'm honored and humbled, so thank you. I have lived in the 16th Ward my entire life. As a matter of fact, I consider this community as another family member because I am the proud daughter of retired Alderman Shirley Coleman, who served this ward for 16 years, and Pastor David Coleman, who has one of the oldest churches in Inglewood, in particular the 16th Ward community. My background is in corporate. 
I've worked in government, and currently as a recent graduate of my master's in non-for-profit management, I am in the non-for-profit management field. I have the heart of service. My entire life, I, I've known about TIF. I've known about the economic development. I've seen what the 16th War has the potential to be. We are a great community. I hear the saying, no good in Inglewood. You all, you all heard that before, no good in Inglewood. I stand to you proudly with all of you all that there is good in Inglewood. I look forward to inheriting our new neighbors in the Chicago Lawn and in the Gage Park area. I am Stephanie Coleman, candidate for 16th Ward Alderman, and thank you. Ms. Lomax. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Cynthia Lomax. I am running for the candidate for the 16th Ward Alderman. I am a longtime standing resident of Inglewood community. I'm grandfathered, I'm seasoned, and I'm grass with it over 49 years in this community. I have worked with various organizations in the community, assisting and servicing our community. Um, I'm looking to work on behalf of the people of the community with like-minded other aldermen to bring positive change to our community. Uh, we, have, we have sat desolate for so long, and now it's time to rise up the Inglewood community. And with the help and the vote of the people, yes, we can. Good afternoon. I am Alderman Tony Folks. I am a candidate for the 15th, excuse me, 16th Ward. I'm all confused. I want to thank uh, Inglewood Votes, and I want to thank all of you for coming out and just uh, taking time out of your day to be here and show your support for our community. Um, I am a 45-year resident of Inglewood. I also have represent Chicago Lawn, which is extended family. I, as a current seating alderman, I have a proven record. Uh, for helping our community. I believe in affordable housing. I, I work to keep affordable housing here because people that live in Chicago, that work in Chicago, should be able to live in Chicago. So I've done that. Many of you know I, I've worked for Jules for 19 years. I was a lead sponsor for sick days. That's very important very important. People that go to work should be able to have a sick day and not worry about not being able to pay their bills if they have to take a day off and their kids are sick. I also believe that I'm invested in human capital. We can build brick and mortar, but human capital. How do you build a community when we, when we have people that are, are broken? Our children can't go to school. We have to invest in our children. Also, last but not least, jobs and economic development. We have to have job training. We have to, we have, to have, a, have people ready to go to a job, not just take a training class and get a certificate and don't have a job on Monday. So we have to be ready to execute, and I'm that alderman, to help execute our community and lift us up to the next level. Thank you. Thank you. So we're gonna get right on with our forum. And the first question I am going to pose to Ms. Coleman. What significant impact have you made in the Inglewood community in the last four to eight years? In the last four to eight years, I have worked on my master's degree as well as my bachelor's degree. So I have been a full-time student as well as, again, work in the corporate and non-for-profit field. I have organized weekly after-school programs for our children at our church. I have worked with a couple of organizations where we have promoted a safe winter break, where we were able to give children an opportunity and a safe haven as a fun activities uh, at um, Ogden Park. I organized a monthly feeding 
I have the heart for service, so the things that I have contributed and done in the last four to eight years have been just from that, from a heart of service. Monthly feedings, monthly community meetings to give the residents in our area information that unfortunately the current alderman has not. These are some of the contributions. Thank you, Ms. Coleman. Mr. Garcia, same question. What significant impact have you made in the Inglewood community in the last four to eight years? I know how it feels to be uh, not having a stable job. I got in injured for the city of Chicago for the past five years. I've collected disability payments. And, now, and for the past five to six years, what I've been doing is I've been going to food pantries and to churches to help out in a volunteer opportunity. And that has given me an opportunity how to be a better server for my community. What I am also is I am very active with the community churches so that we could bring in a different change in quality of life. I know that there's many churches out here in our community that need support, and I am here to help those communities to serve our community by giving food pantries and food uh, benefits to my community. Thank you. The next question is for Alderman Folks. What are your preferred ways of investing TIF funds in the community? This is a question from the audience. What are your preferred ways of investing TIF funds in the community? Uh, TIF funds are, was designed for economic development. Uh, so I believe that economic development, that's where it should be used. It has also been used quite a bit for neighborhood improvement in housing. But the most important thing that I found lacking is that there was a lack of community develop, I mean, community input on how those TIF funds are uh, are going to be used. So I personally, in in my current ward, I would have um, TIF training. But the most important thing in closing is that the community should have an input on how those funds are going to be spent. And along the same lines. And I'm going to open this up to any and all of the candidates here. With all of the upcoming developments coming to the 16th Ward, what is your plan to ensure community involvement on any and all development sites? Ms. Lomax. Our plan to make sure that the community is involved, they know about what's going on, to make sure they have a voice, that if they have the skills, um, that they be a part of the plan as well, not to just allow others to come in and just rehab in our community and we not take a part in our own community. My plan is to build coalitions with not only our faith-based organizations, but our community-based organizations, with our block club presidents, with our precinct captains, with the CAPS programs, any organization that is community involved so that the residents will not only be informed but involved and educated on any new development that's coming in. The 16th Ward deserves to know if any new project, it is our decision that if this project is to come into our ward that we know firsthand and that we have the opportunities firsthand, that we have preference over these opportunities. As a, as a uh, candidate for the 16th Ward, we know that there's a percentage of money that's being allocated to do infrastructure work. What we need to do is we need to stand hard to these private companies and say, we need jobs. If you don't give us 30 to 40% of those jobs coming out of our area, we will picket those entrants and we will not be able to work in my ward. So that is how we'd be able to create jobs within the ward. We will allow it as long as it gives us 30 to 40% opportunities to my neighborhood so that way my constituents could find a successful job living within two to three miles radius and find a successful job and not looking outside going to uh, suburbs. Thank you. 
again, we must all stand tall uh, and together as a community and demand that we have input in our development that comes in our uh, community and not let people tell us downtown that the day before they're gonna announce it and we have no input. This is our community, we are here, people outside, they make snapshots of how they think we live, but when they come in with their cameras, we need to let them know what's happening and how we feel and we're educated, we're smart, and we will fight for our community, but we t it takes everybody, not just elected officials, it takes everybody and demand it because they're coming and we gotta be ready when they come. Thank you. Our next question comes from an online submission. This one I will pose to all of the candidates. How can you help organizations and community residents figure out solutions for abandoned buildings? And what are your solutions to the great number of vacant buildings and homeless families in your area? I'll start with Mr. Garcia. The question is, how can we help neighborhood organizations? Uh, what we have to do is we got to be able to tackle down where our resources are coming from. We know that when I'm out in the street, the first thing I get is, can you get me a job? I, I as a political a candidate, cannot tell you I could get you a job because that's against our moral ethics. But what I could do is we could create opportunities so that we can create part-time positions and be able to work with our coalitions and our neighborhood churches, factories, contractors to create jobs within our constituents so that we could get hired. And I'm open and I'll have an open book policy, open door policy so that the new businesses that are coming in, I will be able to work with them 100% and negotiate with the churches so we can get our constituents employed. Thank you. The question was solutions for to address the vacant lots and the abandoned buildings. I will work with, and again, a coalition of the community organizations. We have an unemployment rate of 25% in the, in the 16th Ward. There are funds and there are resources out here but there is no one to stand up and fight. We have the most abandoned buildings in the 16th floor and we're lack, we have lacked leadership. I will fight so that our unemployed for our ex-offenders Let's create opportunities within the 16th Ward so that you know what all the abandons are not all the, the abandoned buildings are not in a state of, dem of demolish, demolition. Let's train our brothers and sisters who have made mistakes in their lives to learn carpentry, to learn plumbing, to learn electrical work. Let's think outside of the box and create some opportunities because the funds and the resources are there and I will fight for it. Regarding the vacancy in the community, I would hold the necessary um, people accountable for those uh, the vacancy, as far as the banks, previous landlords, whoever are the previous owners of the property, they need to be held accountable to those properties because it stagnates and makes the community look bad and they, they're not showing an interest in it anymore, so they have to be held accountable. We could use some of those vacant lots to, to make um, for the growing of the gardens, not all but just some, and that can help hold food to, to um, sell what the community has raised and keep funds in the community. That's our goal is to unify, not just in the 16th Ward, but throughout the city, we have to work together and be like-minded if we're gonna change and take our city back. That's our... As current uh, sitting alderman, I have co-sponsored, I will say three very quickly, um, keep 
keep Chicago renting. And that's where we want to keep our, instead of foreclosing, let the people stay in the houses. Because if they move out of houses, they have to pay somewhere. So why move out, put the people out of the houses, foreclose them, and leave the abandoned housing? Uh, keep the promise is another one. There is over $400 million in CHA funds that could be used. That stop or 30? 30, right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you guys stop. Okay, um, that could be used to help um, rehab homes. And the Watchman Ordinance, that was an ordinance, and it was all with organizations. And that's uh, empty, vacant houses where these banks that have these and have foreclosed need to have someone outside watching these houses where no one would go in, there's no gang activity, there's no rapes, and so forth. Thank you. Alderman folks, there's a question from the audience specifically for you, mm -hmm. and it reads, you are currently alderman of the 15th ward. Why are you running for alderman in the 16th ward? Okay. The 16th ward, the new boundaries that was, uh, was drawn, it is, consists of the 17th ward, the 15th ward, the 16th ward, and a little bit of the 20th. The new 16th ward, has 40% of my current ward of the people I represent. That is why I'm running. And not only do I believe in ward beyond boundaries. So not only did I represent people in the 15th ward, I help people all over. I help people in, the, in those different wards. I worked in coalitions at the 7th district. We have to think about that. Ward beyond boundaries is all about us. If we get off those boundaries and, and come together as one, that's a lot of power, you all. A lot of power. Our next question comes from the audience. And I'll pose this one to Ms. Lomax. Uh, what do you plan to do to improve infrastructure in the neighborhoods? Street repaving, alleys, street lights, by docks. I will seek out contractors black and minority owned to give them an opportunity to assist in that project. I will seek out residents that have skills and if they're not skilled, encourage them to get in school, educate themselves, to be a part of making history happen in their own community, taking stakeholders, you know, wanting to be a part of a major change and making things happen in your own environment. The next question is for Ms. Coleman. Where do you stand concerning the city's red light camera program? I do not support, neither am I in favor of the city's red light program, which, thank you, which is a privatized program. We are getting tickets, and I for one can, can say, I just received a $100 ticket of a speed light, a speed camera and none of these funds are going back in the 16th Ward. None of these funds are going back in the 16th Ward. We have schools closing, and none of these funds are going back in the 16th Ward. I am not in favor. I do not support the red light camera program. This is where I stand. Thank you. Mr. Garcia, Inglewood is represented by five wards. If elected, how do you intend to work with your fellow aldermen who represent Inglewood? I've thought about that just uh, three days ago, and I would probably make a proposal to the aldermen in office. Guys, I need your help to create job opportunities in my 16th ward. You guys got to be able to help me because this ward has been kicked on, spat on, and just look behind. We never been taking. We never had an upper, anybody to take care of us. So, aldermen, please come around me and let's build this neighborhood, the best neighborhood in the 16th ward, with your support. Please help me. I need your help also. Thank you. The next question: Inglewood has the highest concentration of police officers, but there is still high violence. What is your opinion 
on this reality, and I'd like to hear from any or all of the candidates on this one, a one minute time limit, starting with Alderman Folks. Well, one thing I can say, um, public safety has always been my first and foremost. Um, working with the violence, what I've done is I'm, I'm part of the EV at the expanded anti-violence initiative from the day of conception about five years ago at Seven District. I work hand in hand in the community uh, with the children. The children is, you know, that's, they are our next leaders work in all the schools. I am, uh, I work also with Paul Simon Job Corps. I'm the executive vice president on the board there at Harper High School. I sit on the board of Embark, so I'm very, very active with our children, and our children are doing great things. Seven years ago, you heard about Harper all the time. You don't hear about Harper anymore, and I think that's a direct part of my being involved. So our children are moving in the right direction. Thank you. I'm sorry, can you repeat that please? The question is, Inglewood has the highest concentration of police officers, but there is still high amount of violence. What is your opinion on this reality? I think, the, I think that the police officers, they have to be held to account of, a standard for their action, I mean for the behavior, those that are displaying bad behavior against the, the residents in the community. They have to be accountable first as a person, second as the policeman, because no one wants to be treated unfair. And yes, we would have to encourage our youth to be respectable to the policeman. Don't give them a reason to want to, you know, lock you up for no reason, things of that nature. But I think they need to be accountable first as a person for their behavior. There is obviously a disconnect between the residents and with our police that are here to serve and protect us. As aldermen, I would work closely with the commanders because sometimes our, our young people, they're angry and intimidation is not the way to go about it. When an officer sees a young man, give them encouragement instead of criticizing them and, and making them feel like this is their community and an outsider coming and making them feel like they're not supposed to be here or they don't belong. And also, there's a program where to attract some of the police officers to live in the community that they are serving. Let's get some affordable housing. Let's, let's hold our police officers accountable. Have them live so they'll understand what it's like to live in the Inglewood, in the Chicago Lawn, and in the Gage Park area. Yes, uh, we do have a lot of police uh, presence in the Inglewood area, and that's not correct. Uh, what we need is, a, we need a mutual open door policy with the commander and with the superintendent of police and to let them know that the police are here to serve and protect, not arrest and protect. So what I would do is I would be able to work closer between the community and the police so that the police can teach our constituents, our young lads, on what's right and what's wrong to keep them out of Cook County Jail as a misdemeanor and then create a violent offense later. So we need more transparency with police teaching our communities what they should not do so they don't get caught up in evil acts. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question comes from the streets of Inglewood. Turn your attention to the screen. We will start with Ms. Coleman. I would like to become the alderman of the 16th Ward because I know what it is to lead. I know what it takes to fight for what we deserve for the 16th Ward residents. 
my whole life has been about the 16th Ward, another family, another relative in the family. I have seen what it takes. I know the potential. I've identified business districts. I've identified areas. I've spoken to the residents who have cried out, we need a change. There needs to be a change. Anyone can legislate, but it takes a compassionate heart to really be a public servant. And these are the things, and these are the reasons why I'm running. And because we have lacked leadership in the last eight years, okay? Ms. Lomax. My drive to be the alderman of 16th Ward is because I have the drive, I have the, the years of service where I've allocated my time volunteering, activating, being an activist on behalf of the people um, to unify our community, to, to work with like-minded people that want to see and bring positive change. Uh, we know it can be done. We have to work in our economics to build our, our, sit, our community back up. We have to educate our people, even in the health industry. We have so much we have so much mental health running around in the community. No one is addressing these issues. These people need help. We need people to be restored back so they can be law-abiding citizens. Alderman Folks. I forgot. What's the question again? I was so busy listening to what she was saying. <laughs> you know, I think oh, I she said, why did I want to be, be alderman? That's what it was. Well, um, Actually, when I became um, alderman, I was a community activist. And uh, the house that I, built, I was born in, well, not born in, excuse me, that I lived in was owned by my aunt and was uh, taken, was getting ready to be foreclosed on. And I got, um, we went in and we bought the, the building. And then I became super passionate about what was going on in my community. It's personal here for me. This community was beautiful when I was seven and I wanted to be the way it was. But we, as the whole community, must work together and make it that way. I can't do it by myself. You, we, it's all about us. We have to make it happen. And we're moving in the right direction. I'm an independent person down in City Hall. I'm your voice, not anybody else's voice and they pissed off because I'm the independent voice, but it's all about you. And when I can't be your voice, I won't go down there. Mr. Garcia. As, as a candidate, uh, I will start with a jobs program for my community. I will work with unions, large businesses, and church leaders to support labor's efforts to expand and create jobs retraining and educate initiatives for young and displaced workers. My, my, my dream goal for my community is for everyone to be given another chance to be part of the workforce, no matter what their background is. If I get elected, even though you just currently just served time in the penitentiary in jail, I need you and you will get a second chance with me being elected, thank you. Our next question comes from the street. One more time, turn your attention to the screen. She asked, what do you plan to do to improve the school system here in the 16th Ward? We'll start with Alderman Folks. First thing, we gotta keep our schools open, okay? That's the first thing we need to do. We have enough money in CPS to keep our schools open and not close our schools down and make our kids go to other places. You know, um, it was appalling that they closed 50 schools in our community. I was the only an uh, alderman on the south side that traveled down to Springfield to testify to keep our schools open. And I can say that I, this, my current ward, I had no school closings, only one consolidation. And you know who I blamed it on? I blamed it on you. 
I told CPS, you come over and close schools in our community, you're going to have a war. I, I don't think they wanted the war, so we got our schools staying open. Thank you. I agree wholeheartedly with Alderman folks. Also, I would like to just add to that. Uh, we have to take back our neighborhood schools. We have to have not just elected school board officials, officials but we have to have curriculums in place to make our, to help our children want to learn. Our children need to learn about social justice, how to be more mindful and respectful of others. They need to learn um, the reforming of the curriculum that will help our children understand the functions, as I stated, of society and other disciplines. We need to bring back things that will quicken their thoughts, you know, to help them think. And, not just the children, and, and it's not just the teachers, but it's the parents as well. Parents are the first teachers of their kids. And improving the current school system, again, no more schools closing, especially when liquor stores are being opened, okay? I will fight that no other schools will be closed. And as taxpayers, we are still paying money for the schools that are closed. We're still paying money to support and maintain these empty buildings. Let's talk about attracting some organizations or attracting churches and different people to make incubators where we can do after school programs, where we can give our children more support. Let's enhance the schools that we currently still have in the 16th War so that our children are getting the quality education they need and that they deserve. As aldermen, I will fight. No more schools will close. I will fight that we will enhance our schools, that we will enhance our, our computer programs, our books, that they have the curriculum that the, they need and deserve. This subject, depending on where you stand, you can get beat up outside. So this is where I stand. As far as school closing, if the school is under performance by the teachers, then we went, what we need to do is we need to do a rigorous testing that the teachers are qualified to teach our kids. The mayor just the other day said it was a tough decision that I had to make and close down those schools. And so what I would do is I would impose no more school closings, but I would implement that the teachers are accountable and take courses in colleges so that they could meet the standards to teach our kids the proper education so no more schools can be closed and you can earn your $65,000, $70,000 a year wage that you would make as a teacher. That'd be my question. That's me my answer. Our next question comes from the audience. And this is a very special question because it comes from one of our youth, one of our young people. And they pose this question to everyone sitting up here. And that question is, what can you do to build the community for the children that don't have anyone to take care of them or don't have anywhere to go? That's the question from our youth. We can start with Alderman folks and move down. Um, first of all, to, to that youth, um, you must be active in your schools. Like I said, I'm very active. I'm very active in Harper High School. And um, we have a lot of homeless pe children there. You have to come out and tell people that you're homeless. Sometimes you get afraid. Don't be afraid. We all make, you know, we all have inner things that we're ashamed about and it might be, but you have to. I work, like I said, I work with um, the Job Corps, Paul Simon's Job Corps. We can have children where you don't have places to go. That's a beautiful facility. And you, it's like, it's a campus. You can have a place to, you can place to sleep. They feed you three times a day. And you have a curriculum, so there is. The pastors have come out with me and, and toured this facility. We have places to go. Your children are the number one priority because you're going to grow up, and I need you to grow up strong because you're going to take care of me. Well, 
what I would do to help the children in the community that seem to be lacking. I would reach out to the faith-based leaders. I would reach out to the organizations in the community because that's our future, that's our now. And if they're hurting now, imagine how they're hurt later. They're, they're destined for the jail. They're destined to go to jail. They're destined to, to, to get into other things that's not suitable for them. But I would work with like-minded people. I would reach out to other constituents. What can we do? We would get with the parents. What can we do to make something better for these children, to show them a better way? Because some of them children, all they know is the streets. The gang would take them in and make them feel like family. I have children, kids in my own community that seem to live in the street. And I try to work with them and show them a better way, tell them organizations. United Builders took some in and hired them for the youth, for the summer over um, last year. So to work with the faith-based leaders, open your doors. Let's reach out and help these <laughs> As an advocate for youth and as the youngest person uh, on, this on, this on this panel, um, I reflect or I, I, I'm an example of what you can do in Inglewood and encouraging our youth that you can get your education. Graduate from, from high school. Graduate, go to college. Learn, and if, if college isn't for you, you learn a trade, learn, learn some skills that you can be competitive in this workforce. Let's, as a leader, I will fight that we get a community center, that we get a safe haven for our children, that monies are being put back in our park districts, that monies are being put back in our park districts, that our children have some place to go and be after school, that they are in a safe environment. Let's mentor our children. Let's get some iron men working with the young men. Hello. The question is, what can you do for your children? I have two examples. Bullying is not tolerated in no school. Why? Because the, to the re retribution with bullying results with a lot of dropouts. And that's why you created uh, offices or, or, or high schools such as temp high schools such as Paul Simon on 32nd and West and Kedzie Avenue, and you also create Lincoln's Challenge. So what we need to do is create, create job, job trainings for our kids and job skills so they could stay in school and they could learn the trades before the system, which is Tom Dart's system, not him personally, but the juvenile system picks them up and, and locks them up for life. So I will implement a rigorous job training program. Thank you. All right, we have now entered the lightning round. And these are questions from the Inglewood Votes team that just require a simple yes or no. And we're gonna do four of them. One of them comes from the Inglewood Votes team and I found a bonus one that came from our online web portal. The first question is, would you support an independent and democratically elected school board representing school districts that are equitably apportioned? Let's get the mic. Yes. Yes, I will be in agreement. Yes. My answer is yes. Next question. Currently, there are no aldermanic ward offices in the greater Inglewood area. If elected, do you commit to opening a ward office in Inglewood, yes or no? A ward office such as a campaign office? Yes, the ward office, if elected. The office should be open in your neighborhood, 16th Ward, yes. Absolutely, positively, yes. Yes, we would need one in the community. That's where we'll be serving because it's a so yes or no answer. Yes, it is. Yes. Yes, it's already done. Next question. Would you support a community-based advisory council 
for any current or future tax increment financing districts in your ward? Yes. Yes, yes I would. Yes. Yes. And the last question comes from online. The Inglewood Green Line 63rd Racine Station remains closed. Yet, it is recognized as a historically significant station that cannot be demolished. Elected or not, will you support an action to have our historical station reopened for service via resolution in March of 2015? Yes or no? If the budget is there, yes. Yes. Yes, I would. Yes. Thank you, candidates. That concludes the automatic forum for the 16th ward. I am going to turn things over to our host. After we allow them two minutes each to give their closing statements. So you have two minutes to make your last appeal to our audience. And we're gonna begin with Alderman Folks. Okay, with me. I just wanna say I have been an independent voice, the voice of the people for the last eight years in uh, City Hall. I will continue to be an independent voice, your voice, only your voice in City Hall. And the day that I cannot be your voice is the day that I will quit being alderman. So punch 53 <laughs> on February 24th and elect me as your alderman. I will continue to push my passion and drive to promote unity in the community, not just in my community alone, but I will reach out to the other co surrounding communities to work together on the betterment for our community. My platform would be to, to bring the development, the economics, educate our children, bring mental health awareness to our community, hold police accountable for their action, also to organize justice, to teach our people about social justice, also the infrastructure, to bring jobs to our people where they can work at home, meaning in the community, um, also to promote the green health for our community, whereas Whole Food, which is coming to the community, they were also sponsoring the selling of the products that are grow grown in the community and to promote culture among our people that we must stand together in our community as one. For 16 years, my mother served as alderman of the 16th Ward. And that's not the reason why I'm running, but I'm, I'm bringing that up to say in the last eight years, the reason why I'm running, because I received this piece from this current alderman. In the last eight years, this was a pivotal point for me, because in the last eight years, this alderman has bragged about fining 8,000 residents in the 16th Ward of vacant lots and abandoned building. This alderman has only helped 300 families in the last eight years. That's only 20 families a year. In the last 96 months, this alderman has only sponsored one expungement summit. In the last eight years, this alderman has only sponsored one job fair, as bad as we need jobs. In the last eight years, this alderman has only co-sponsored 150 ordinances in the city of Chicago. 150 goes through the city a month. And in eight years, 96 months, this alderman has only sponsored 150, this alderman has only represented us, represented us 150 ordinances. I can do more in eight months than this alderman has done in eight years. I, am, I will fight for the residents of the 16th Ward. I am a leader. I have a heart for service. I will make sure that we get and deserve every resources provided. I am your public servant. I am the next generation. I am a game changer. Punch 55 for someone who's gonna fight and who's gonna lead this great war. God bless you all. constituents and honored uh, podium and 
host, I just want to say in Spanish, gracias. That means thank you. Uh, it is very hard for me to be up here and to be able to get blitzed by candidates every day saying, vote for me, vote for me, vote for me, vote for me. Only during election time you see the candidates come out. But for the past eight years, I think we had enough of enough. It's time to go forward and make a change. Please punch number 54, Jose Garcia, and I will represent you wholeheartedly because not only 10 years ago, my heart changed for the better, but I also have five grandchildren and three of my grandchildren of mixed race. There is no other area than to be the best candidate to serve this community and to represent you, and I'm not gonna be a puppet for nobody. So I am not in support of no candidates for mayor. Please punch 54, Jose Garcia. Thank you.